class today we will continue with the chapter of manufacturing industries of class 10 in our last video we have discussed about the classification of industries today we will go ahead with the agro based industries now in this video we are going to discuss what do you mean by agro based industries we have already discussed what is agro based industry in the earlier video but today we will recapitulate the definition of agro based industries here we will discuss about the textile industry where we will know that why textile industry occupies a unique position in our indian economy we will also know about the cotton textile industry where we will know that what are the reasons for the localization of the cotton mills in maharashtra and gujarat in the early period we will also know that what are the challenges that are faced by the cotton textile industry in our country india and we will also know about the textile trade so without wasting much of our time let's get started let us start with the agro based industries in our last video where we have discussed about the classification of the industries we have already discussed what are agro based industries let us recapitulate what are agro based industries agro based industries are the industries that are based on agricultural raw materials for example cotton jute silk sugar woolen textiles edible oil all these industries are based on agricultural raw materials in india the most important and the oldest agro based industry is the textile industry so let us move ahead with the textile industry textile industry is one of the oldest and most widespread industry in india this industry is the only industry in the country which is self reliant what do you mean by self reliant self reliant means that products are produced at each stage and are used as raw materials for next stage of production so we can say that this is the only industry which is self reliant that means we are able to produce from the raw material to finished products completely in our country and this is complete in the value chain that means from the raw material to the highest value added products here we can see the representation that how do we obtain the textile first we get the raw fiber that is referred as a fiber production then the raw fiber is spinned so that we can get the yarn or the thread the yarn that is obtained is weaved and kneaded to obtain the fabric then the fabric is dyed and converted into a finished product and the finished product is the garment which is sold in the market so with each stage that is from the raw fiber to the garment we can see that value is adding that means with each stage of production the value is increasing so we can say that in india textile industry is the only industry which is self reliant and complete in the value chain everything starting from the raw materials to the highest value added products that is the garments everything is produced where in india the textile industry occupies a unique position in indian economy let us find out why now coming to the contribution to industrial production in terms of contribution to industrial production the textile industry has a significant contribution which is about 14% which makes the textile industry as one of the largest industry in india now in terms of employment generation this industry generates employment to about 35 million persons directly or indirectly this industry itself is not only in demand but it also creates demand for other industries such as chemicals dyes packaging materials and engineering works now as we obtain the fabric the next stage of production is to send the fabric to get dyed to get colored to get different designs and all this are done by specific industries the chemical industries the dyeing industries the coloring industries where after the garment is produced the garment is packed and that packed material is transported to the market so this industry also creates demand for other industries 
Now, in terms of its contribution to India's GDP, this industry contributes 4% to India's GDP. It also helps in earning 24.4% of the total foreign currency which is drawn in the country. Now, let us move ahead with the cotton textile industries. India has a glorious tradition of producing excellent cotton textiles. Before the British rule, Indian handspun and hand woven cloth already had a wide market. The Muslims of Dhaka, Chins of Masulipatnam, Kalikos of Kalikut, and gold rich cotton of Buranpur, Surat, and Badodara were known worldwide for the quality and design. But the production of hand woven cotton textile was quite expensive and time consuming. Now we can see that after 18th century, there were technological innovations and discoveries. Spinning jenny was discovered, power loom came to use, and this led to the increase of production of cotton textiles in Europe. Under the colonial dominance, the handloom industry faced a steep competition from the mill made cloth. Why? Because the mill-made products were cheap and were produced with good quality fabrics through mechanized industrial units. Hence, the traditional industries suffered a setback during this period and it failed to compete with the mill-made cloth from England. Now, let us know one important fact. Did you know that the first textile mill was established in Mumbai 1854? There was high demand for clothes in UK due to two world wars and this gave a boost to the development of the cotton textile industry in British India. When the Britishers were busy in the world war, the demand for cotton textile industry and this was fulfilled by the Indian cotton textile industry. So the two world wars gave a boost to the development of the cotton textile industry in British India. Now, we will see that in the early years, the cotton textile industries were mostly concentrated in Maharashtra and Gujarat. Now, let us find out the reasons behind the localization. Number one is the availability of raw materials. Due to the favorable soil type and other climatic conditions, cotton is grown in a vast area in this state. So, raw materials are available in plenty in this state. Number two is transport. These states are well connected to the rest of the country by rail and road. Also, we can find many large ports from where the finished products can be easily transported. The next reason behind the localization of cotton textile industry in Maharashtra and Gujarat is the market, which is yet another important reason. The products have a great demand in the national and international market. These states enjoy good transport facilities and this enables their reach to the national and international markets. Number four is labor. Now in these states, cheap labor force were locally available. Not only cheap labor force locally available, but here we can also see that these states were supported by migrant laborers from the northern states. Number five is a moist climate. Now, for cotton cultivation, moist climate is a must. The southern part of India has tropical climate and as it is close to sea, so it has moisture. So we can see that these states have favorable climatic conditions which were required for the growth of cotton. But today, these industries are not centralized in Maharashtra and Gujarat. These industries have expanded to other parts of our country. The cotton textile industry also has close links with agriculture. And this provides a living to farmers by generating employment. How? The workers are engaged in plucking cotton balls. So first, they pluck the cotton balls. Then, these balls are sent for ginning. Ginning is a process of removing seeds from cotton. That is obtaining cotton seeds, which is edible and used for different purposes. Once ginning is done, it goes for spinning, which means making of yarn. Then it goes for weaving, which means making of fabric. Then it goes for dyeing, coloring, designing, packaging, tailoring and sewing. 
So cotton textile industry has close links with agriculture and it provides a living to farmers by generating employment. Now let us find out what is spinning and weaving. What is spinning? The process of drawing out fibers from a mass and twisting them together to form a continuous thread or yarn. That means to get the yarn, to make the yarn or the thread is referred as spinning. Now what is weaving? What do you mean by weaving then? Weaving is a method of textile production in which two distinct set of yarns or threads are interlaced to obtain the fabric or the cloth. So we can say that making of the fabric is referred as weaving. Now we will see that in India, spinning continues to be centralized in Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. That means spinning is mostly concentrated in the states of Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. Whereas weaving is highly decentralized. That means it is not concentrated at one place. Rather, it is distributed. Every region of India has its own traditions. Since these designs help bring in much needed foreign revenue, the spun cloth is sent to different locations for different designs to be meted on the cloth. For example, the Taut of Bengal, the Banarasi Saris of Banaras. So here we can see that weaving is done in different way. Different skills are used. There is variation in design. So weaving is done in different parts of the country as different skills or variation of textile can be seen. Now in terms of production, we will see that India has high class production of spinning, whereas weaving supplies in low quality of fabrics. Now we are producing yarn at a large scale, but we are unable to use the yarn. Why that is so? Because the good quality of yarn is exported to other countries. That is why our spinning mills are competitive at global level because we are producing yarn at a large scale and we are also capable of using all the fibers that we produce. But in terms of weaving and meeting and processing units, we are unable to use much of the high quality of yarn that is produced because the high quality of yarn is exported to other countries and the poor quality of yarn is left behind for our use. Today, khadi has got a lot of demand in the national and international market. The hand-spun khadi provides large-scale employment to weavers in their homes as a cottage industry. Now let us move ahead with the challenges which are faced by the textile industry. Now when it comes to production of cotton, in India we mainly produce long staple cotton. Now what is long staple cotton? Based on the length of the fiber, it is called the short staple, medium staple or long staple. Long staple is the best one. In terms of production, production in long staple is more than that of short and medium but the production is not sufficient. This means that yes, there is significant increase in the production of good quality of long staple cotton, but still the need to import is felt because the production is still not sufficient. The production of the cotton textile is done in the large and modern factories, but most of this production is done in fragmented small units, which can cater to the local market. As a result, our spinners, they export cotton yarn at a high rate while the apparel and the garment manufacturers, they have to import fabric. So this is yet another challenge faced by the cotton textile. In many parts of our country, erratic power supply is a major problem. Regular power supply without breaks is essential for this industry. Machinery is also outdated, so the output of labor is quite low. Particularly in the weaving and the processing sectors, the machinery needs to be upgraded. This industry also faces steep competition from the synthetic fiber industry, that is nylon, polyester, in terms of its cost. That means these products are quite cheaper than the cotton textile and also they are convenient to use. So these are the challenges faced by the cotton textile industries in India. Now let us move ahead with the textile trade. India exports yarn to Japan. Other importers of cotton goods from India are USA, UK, Russia, France, East European countries, 
Nepal, Singapore, Sri Lanka and African countries. India has the second largest installed capacity of spindles after China. So you can see that everywhere China is in the first. So India has second largest installed capacity of spindles after China. Now coming to the share in the wall trade. We have a large share in the wall trade of cotton yarn, which accounts to one fourth of the total trade. But our trade in garments is quite low. It is only 4% of the world's total. I hope everyone understood the topics that we have discussed in today's video. There is a PDF which has been attached in the description box for better understanding of the chapter. Still, if you have any problem, you can let me know by just a comment in the comment box given below. If you like my video, don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe my channel to get more videos related to different topics. Stay tuned, I will be back soon with a new video and a new topic. Till then, take care, study well and stay safe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.